Hi, my name is Mr. Peck from Ideas Inc. School and today we will be discussing about kinetic particle theory. First off, let's start by stating three assumptions about particle theory. Number one, all matter are made up of particles. Number two, these particles are always in constant random motion. Number three, these particles are always constantly colliding with one another. And to prove that these assumptions are true, we can perform three experiments. The first experiment describes Brownian motion. In this experiment, smoke particles are observed under a light microscope. Due to the random collisions between the larger smoke particles and the smaller invisible air particles, the smoke particles appear to move about randomly to the observer. The second experiment involves a separation technique known as crystallization. When a small crystal is lowered into a concentrated salt solution, the crystal appears to grow larger over time. This happens due to the random collisions between water molecules and salt particles in the solution. These random collisions then in turn cause the salt particles to collide with the crystal, making it grow. The third experiment involves the diffusion of substances like perfume. Due to the random collision between perfume particles and air particles, there will be a net movement of perfume particles from a region of higher to lower concentration down a concentration gradient. In the next part of the chapter, we will be describing how particles behave as a solid, liquid or gas. As a solid, the particles are very closely packed and arranged in an orderly manner. These particles vibrate about their fixed positions and cannot move about freely. Particles in a solid also have low kinetic energy. Thus, because of these properties, solids have a fixed shape and volume. On the other hand, when describing a liquid, the particles are quite closely packed and arranged in a disorderly manner. These particles are able to slide over one another and can move about freely within the confines of the liquid. Particles in a liquid also have a moderate amount of kinetic energy. Thus, because of these properties, liquids have no fixed shape but have a fixed volume. Lastly, as a gas, the particles are very widely spaced and arranged in a disorderly manner. These particles move rapidly and freely in all directions. Particles in a gas also have high kinetic energy and there is negligible forces of attraction between them. Thus, because of these properties, gases have no fixed shape and volume. Now, let's zoom in on the various changes of state. You can pause the audio and refer to the diagram in the notes. Solids gain heat in order to melt and form liquids. Liquids gain heat in order to boil or evaporate and form gases. Gases lose heat and undergo condensation to form liquids. And finally, liquids lose heat and freeze to form solids. Curiously, there are processes that skip the liquid state. A solid can bypass the liquid state by undergoing sublimation to form gas. And reversely, a gas can bypass the liquid state by undergoing deposition to form a solid again. Please note that regardless of any change in state, the mass, size, and number of particles remain unchanged. Next, we go into more details about some of these changes of state. We will start with sublimation. Sublimation occurs when a solid changes directly to gaseous state, totally bypassing the liquid phase. This can happen when the melting and boiling point of a substance is the same. The reverse of sublimation is known as deposition. This change occurs when a substance in gaseous state becomes a solid. Examples of substances that can sublime include ammonium chloride, dry ice, also known as solid carbon dioxide, and mothballs which are also known as naphthalene. Next, we will be comparing between the evaporation and boiling process. Both processes involve the change of state from liquid to gas. However, evaporation occurs only at the surface while boiling occurs throughout the liquid. Evaporation occurs over a range of temperatures while the boiling point of a pure substance occurs at a fixed temperature. During evaporation, no bubbles can be observed but boiling a liquid produces bubbles. The source of heat for evaporation comes from the surroundings but boiling draws heat from sources like a kitchen stove or a Bunsen burner. Lastly, evaporation is a slower process and the rate of evaporation increases with temperature. Boiling, on the other hand, is a much faster process. Next, we will use particle theory to describe how ice changes in state from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. At minus 10 degrees, the particles are behaving in a solid state. They are very closely packed and arranged in an orderly manner. These particles are vibrating about fixed positions and are held together by very strong intermolecular forces of attraction. As temperature increases, heat energy is converted to kinetic energy. The particles then start to vibrate more vigorously. They collide with other particles more frequently and move further away from each other. This trend continues till the temperature reaches 0 degrees Celsius, which is the melting point of pure water. At 0 degrees, the particles have gained sufficient energy to overcome the strong forces of attraction between the particles and break free from their fixed positions. During the melting process, both solid and liquid states are present. 
and melting will stop after all the solid have turned into liquid state. As temperature increases from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius, the particles are now behaving in a liquid state. They are not as closely packed as they once were as a solid. These particles are arranged in a disorderly manner and are able to slide over one another due to weaker forces of attraction. This entire process can be summarized in the heating curve found on the next page. Please pause the audio to study the heating curve carefully. Note on the horizontal section of the graph that there will always be two states present during changes of state. For instance, both solid and liquid states can be found during melting, and both liquid and gaseous states can be found during boiling. But look closely at the temperature during these changes of state. Why does the temperature remain constant during that period of time? This is because, when a substance melts, the absorbed heat energy is not converted to kinetic energy. Instead, the heat energy is used to overcome the forces of attraction between the particles. Since the kinetic energy of a substance is directly proportional to its temperature, no changes in kinetic energy means that the temperature will remain constant. When a substance boils, a situation similar to melting occurs. No changes in kinetic energy during boiling results in a constant temperature. Additionally, heat energy is also used to overcome atmospheric pressure in order for liquid particles to escape as a gas. We have concluded the bulk of this chapter. The next section involves factors that affect the rate of diffusion in the porous pot experiment. Continue to listen if these are relevant to your syllabus. If not, thank you for listening and if you have any doubts, please approach Mr. Peck. Let's begin by recalling the definition of diffusion. Due to the random collisions between particles, there will be a net movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. And this process will continue till equilibrium is achieved. Please pause the audio and refer to the diagram in the notes. In the setup, we introduce chlorine gas from the left and ammonia gas from the right side of the tube. After some time, a white ring of ammonium chloride is seen forming about a quarter of the distance away from the source of chlorine. This is because the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the molecular mass of the gas. Meaning that the higher the molecular mass, the heavier the molecule, thus the slower the rate of diffusion. Chlorine gas has a molecular mass of 71 while ammonia gas have a molecular mass of only 70. Therefore, chlorine gas, being the heavier gas, will diffuse at a much slower rate, about four times slower than ammonia. As a result, both gases meet at a location that is closer to the left side of the tube. Upon meeting, they react to form a white compound known as ammonium chloride. It is important to note that it will take about 10 minutes before a visible white ring can be observed. This is because it will take time for enough ammonium chloride to accumulate to a high enough concentration that is visible to our eyes. But there are two more factors that can affect the rate of diffusion. The next factor is temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy, thus the faster the rate of diffusion. The last factor depends on the state of matter. Gaseous state has the highest kinetic energy of all three states, thus gases diffuses at the fastest rate, followed by liquids and finally, solids have the slowest rate of diffusion. In the last part of the chapter, we will be studying the porous pot experiment. Please pause the audio and study the diagram in the notes. Let's begin. The inner pot is made of a porous material to allow gaseous exchange. This pot contains nitrogen gas and is surrounded by a larger external container that is filled with helium gas. Helium has an atomic mass of 2 while nitrogen has a much higher molecular mass of 28. Since the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the molecular mass of the gas, helium will diffuse into the pot at a much faster rate than the nitrogen gas diffusing out. As a result, there is a net increase in volume of gas in the pot, and this will cause the pressure in the pot to increase. The increased pressure will force the water level on the left side to decrease while the water level on the right to increase simultaneously. However, this effect is only temporary. Eventually, the water level will equalize again once the pressure in the pot and the external container reaches an equilibrium. We have finally come to the end of the chapter. If you have any doubts, please approach Mr. Peck. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.